This week we take a look at the user consent feature in Microsoft Azure and ask what is it, how does it work, and why you really need to know it. So stick with me. As always, you're going to learn something here. Greetings my YouTuber friends, welcome back to the channel. I really appreciate you stopping by, thank you. Um, this week I thought we'd take a look at Microsoft Azure's user consent feature. Uh, user consent, just so you know, um, actually looks a little bit like this. When you click on an app, it prompts the user and it lets you know um, what access requirements the application has, what it's going to do, is it going to read your profile, is it going to do whatever it's going to do with the app. And then the user clicks on and says, yes, I consent to that. Now, in fairness, nine times out of ten, it's absolutely fine. But just occasionally, things can go wrong. And as an admin, the question is, do you want your users just clicking on consent and potentially bringing in a malicious application? Or do you want to have a little bit more control? So in this session, we're going to have a look at all your different options. I thought we'd also take a look at Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps as well. So if you're using that app, you can also control you, the user consent feature there as well. Now, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would really appreciate you clicking on that subscribe button up there, ringing that bell, and you won't miss out on the good stuff in the future. And as just a little bit of support, I would really appreciate it if you could kindly click on that like button and give me a big thumbs up. It really does mean a lot, uh, especially to the channel. All right. Now, um, I've gone ahead. I've time coded everything. Uh, so feel free to jump in and out um, if you will. And of course, any questions, comments, feedback, get them down below and I will do my very best to answer them for you. So I think without any more jibber jabber, I think it's about time for some demos. So for the first of my demos, I'm going to start here in Azure Active Directory in the main portal. I'm going to come over here on the left hand side, click on Azure AD, and the first thing that we need to do is we need to come in here into Enterprise Applications. So down in here we have, there's a couple of options really that we need to look at here. The first one is Consent and Permissions, and the other one is Admin Consent Requests. So kicking off in here, the user con permissions consent, um, you can see here that basically user consent for applications. So are you going to, allow, are you happy rather with your users clicking I consent or do you want a little bit more control? So basically here, user consent for applications, we have three options. Do not allow consent. So in other words, an administrator here is the only person that can request uh, access to the apps, all right? So if you're trying to install an app and you're a user, then you will get a message um, that the administrator needs to approve the installation, all right? Allow user consent for apps from verified publishers. And this is the most recommended. Now, verified publishers, all of these, uh, sit along nicely with Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps, so we know that they're trusted applications. Now, you can set those permissions uh, to classify as low impact. So I can click onto here and I can say, yep, yeah, um, the, uh, I don't want to change that at the moment, actually. Um, so you can see here that um, the user can select the permissions and that's fine. As long as the apps are trusted, then it's absolutely fine. Or you can just completely allow user consent for apps. And again, you get a little warning about that. You also get a link that takes you through to docs. Dot Microsoft dot com. So that is the least restrictive. All right. So probably somewhere here is absolutely fine for trusted apps from verified publishers. Now, 
Um, group owners. So if you're using groups and Microsoft Teams, then one of the, especially with Teams, you know that you can extend a Microsoft 365 group to become a Microsoft Team. Now, when you do that, of course, it means that you can also install third-party apps into Teams. So again, how do you want the permissions to, to work with group owners? So do not allow group owner consent. Uh, consent. Uh, so group owners cannot allow applications uh, to access any data. In other words, this might go alongside this. With the, This is basically just admin controlled. All right. Allow group owner consent uh, with selected group owners. So if you do that, you can then select specific groups. So again, you may have a number of admin groups uh, within your organization. Um, or you can allow uh, group owners consent for all group owners. So in this case, it's the least restrictive. Um, so again, potentially this combined with this could potentially cause you problems. And I don't recommend that option. All right. So something like that will be fine. And again, something like that will be fine. But again, it's, it's whatever works for your organization. So once you've done that, go ahead, save the changes. And that's essentially the six user consent settings. Now, if I click over here to permission classifications, um, you'll be familiar with this. So user read, um, are you going to allow offline access? Open ID, allow the users to sign in, view a user's profile, and view the user's email address. So this is basically the default set of permissions. Now, um, you can add permissions if you want to. So you can actually control what permissions that uh, open authentication token actually sees. And you can also add permissions from a whole bunch of different sources as well. And what you're actually doing here is this is the application programming interface, the API. Now, Microsoft Graph cover obviously all the API rules and conditions for Microsoft 365. But you can also see here that we have a number of the individual services as well. So if you find yourself with a need to add in additional permissions, maybe it's something that you've designed internally, then this is the place to go. So you can see here that you can add in, so for example, email, offline access, and then you've got all of these other uh, options here as well. So for example, agreement, um, you've read the terms and conditions of agreement, um, analytics, um, API connectors and things like that. So there's a whole bunch of additional permissions that you can see here. Now, as I've said, use these cautiously. And again, definitely do a little bit of research on this. Okay, so that is the user consent settings. Now, as I've said, if you said do not allow consent and an administrator will be required, that request then goes to the admin. And in this case, what happens here in the admin center, I scroll down and I will see those requests in here with the admin consent request. All right. And you can see pending. Um, it will give you a list of pending requests. And as an administrator, you can then um, obviously either accept or reject that. So that's managing user consent in Azure Active Directory. But what about all the hundreds and thousands of potential apps that your users are going to use on things like mobile devices? Is there a way that I can manage consent on those as well? Well, the answer is yes. We can use cloud apps. And Microsoft, of course, it used to be called Cloud App Security. It's called Defender for Cloud Apps. And there is a tool in there that deals with that. Let me show you what I mean. For the second of my two demos, I'm coming in here to Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps. And I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to come in here to the Investigate Blade. And I'm going to click on OAuth Apps. 
So um, Cloud App Security, now known as Defender for Cloud Apps, is fantastic at monitoring the use of applications on a network. It can also give you risk scores, so how risky are these apps? And at the same time, you can see here, it shows you the risk level, or the permission level, rather, of some of these apps. So if I click into a particular app here and scroll down, then it shows me, um, obviously, who the vendor is, where the vendor is coming from, um, and it's also, see, you can see if it's got a redirect uh, URL on it as well. Now, if I actually click into the app a little bit more detailed, you can see here, this is horrendous. So this particular app is actually needing 40 different permissions, including Intune RBAC settings. So there, there is a lot of information here. It could do an awful lot of damage if this was malicious app. So again, very, very careful that you want to come in here and determine whether you're going to approve or ban this particular app. And of course, if you feel that an app has got too many permissions, then you can report the app to the vendor. So definitely take a look in here. So as I said, this is the OAuth Apps Blade, and you'll find this in the Investigate node in Defender for Cloud Apps. So there you have it, user consent in Azure Active Directory and Defender for Cloud Apps. Absolutely critical that you understand what that is. And if it's not properly implemented, it cause, could cause you a lot of headaches, believe me. If you enjoyed this session, please go ahead, give me a big thumbs up, hit that like button, it really does help out my channel. And of course, if you've not subscribed, then go ahead, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and you won't miss out on future postings. And as always, I love your comments, questions, and feedback. So please uh, get them down below. So that's it for this week. I really hope you've uh, enjoyed it. And if this is your first time on the channel, thanks so much for dropping by. And I look forward to seeing you again. You stay safe. I'll see you soon. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.